Welcome to the February 16th, 2021 episode of Reactive Consciousness, the in-depth podcast about what happened this week in our lives. I think yeah, that is what that is, yes. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. I am your host, Dynamo, and this is... Well, hold on, something didn't sound right, something didn't sound right. Can we, can we do this over? <laughs> something is horribly wrong. Dynamo. <laughs> Clap. And this is Bonesaw. Dynamo. <laughs> Uh, this is Lotus Prince. <laughs> no, this is Vice the Bold, and uh, I w- do not want to be associated with Dynamo. <laughs> His entrance was amazing, though. You gotta admit. Oh, oh yes, but he... His he's exit also... was one of the least dignified things I've he... seen happen to a bad guy in a movie. <laughs> he's also probably the biggest piece of shit out of all the pieces of shit in the movie. <laughs> with the possible exception of... Um, What's his real name? Richard Dawkins? Richard Dawson. he's the host. Dawson. Dawson. Yeah. Okay. Richard Dawson. Yeah. I, I still love that, for, for anyone who doesn't know, we're referring to the Schwarzenegger movie, The Running Man. I, I just love that they got but an based actual... Based on the hit uh, Stephen King story. <laughs> yeah, the Richard Bachman story. But I, I just love that they got uh, like an actual game show host to be the evil game show host. That That's so and, good. And, and like the best one for that. Uh, at, yeah, especially like, at the time, he's, yeah. he's, he's the prototypical like game like kind of like charismatic but also kind of skeezy yeah they really they nailed it with him yeah 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 um but yeah he he, he's basically you know like an evil johnny carson yeah (laughs) like almost you know what i mean like i still love that one bit where he's on the phone well now i don't want to end up like gilligan gilligan from gilligan's island do, 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 do. Yeah, yes, the one with the <laughs> boat. And then the scene just ends. <laughs> it's amazing. That's a good movie. I, I enjoy that movie. Uh, I only recently saw it in its totality. Like, I've only, like, like seen parts of it. Uh, yeah, yeah. For, for, TV like, or most something. Of my life. But, one like, of it, us it, is it in really big good. trouble. <laughs> I, I, I really enjoyed that one. Yeah. Um, But anyway, we, we have actual news to go over. <laughs> oh, but Rob- this isn't the Running Man discussion. This isn't Corrective <laughs> Consciousness, where we I mean, randomly decided to talk about the Running Man out of nowhere. Let, let's watch. Uh, let's go over all the movies that barely follow uh, Stephen King's uh, like uh, template. Let, let's go. <laughs> let's go into the super popular Korean TV show, The Running Man. That's not at all related to the Stephen King story <laughs> or the Schwarzenegger movie. Uh, so yeah, the, we, we normally reserve, uh, television and movies for the end of this, but this is obviously like the biggest thing to, because it's all over, you know, social media at the moment. Yeah. But, this is kind of unavoidable. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah. We, 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 have to talk about this one, uh, especially considering I've been talking, you know, about its praises. Uh, Gina, uh, Carano is, uh, not, uh, renewed for Mandalorian. She is one of the main characters of the show. Um, she is like kind of like a sidekick almost to uh, to Mando, and uh, yeah, I, I I'm not gonna miss her. <laughs> I mean, um, she was a pretty good character, pretty cool badass girl, um, you know, pretty cool. But uh, just the stuff, I don't understand these people that are like, you know, I gotta put this online, uh, you know, especially yeah. when they have like they're they're on the uh, the biggest show on television. Um, yeah. but she's literally on the biggest show in television and Star Wars is one of those things that will always exist um, so they, they even brought back I mean at this point it's not a spoiler um, they brought back the character who played Jango Fett for him to be actual uh, Boba Fett yeah, they that's brought actually, back the actor that's genius <laughs> uh, they brought him back so I mean like she could she could have had a career in Star Wars for her entire rest of her life, um, you know. Like a, a, anybody who is a Star Wars character is a Star Wars character for life because they will they will they will bring her back for cameos. Maybe yeah. even give her like a I mean 
like Ashoka is is going to be a character that is going to go on for a long time. They well, I was I was going to mention a lot of people from that show. I think we're going to get like spin off or something like that. So yeah, her character I mean, had she potential could have had her that. own. She could have had her own show. She could have been like doing voice acting in um, like video games. Oh yeah, it never um, ends. You know, the Lego stuff, stuff. It goes forever. One thing I want to point out though is that your your wording of what happened is what oh. actually happened because the internet was flipping yeah. out over how she got fired. No, she didn't. Uh, she did not get fired. She is not getting renewed. Uh, and similarly, yeah. it is not because of her recent controversial tweets. Those were the straw that broke the camel's back. She'd been in trouble before. So it's not like, oh, suddenly we're reacting to this. It's like, no, it's yeah. been building up for a while. <laughs> uh, it's just like mostly online toxic behavior. Um, Pretty much. The, 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 yeah, I mean, like... it. V- very much like conspiracy kind of nonsense that's been going yeah, on. Yeah, transphobic. And, uh, yeah, transphobic. Um, imagine gas, being gaslighting. That, imagine that being people. that kind of person playing a Star Wars character. It's like Star Trek. It's like, did you miss the entire series? <laughs> <laughs> like, you, they are literally floating space Nazis that they're fighting constantly. Yep. Um, like literal. They're named after Nazis. Stormtroopers are is a yeah, stormtroopers. Is, yeah, is a Nazi phrase. Um, it's it's like one of those the, things where, like, you know, uh, uh, again, I'm, I'm talking about Star Trek now, but it's like, when did Star Trek get so SJW? It's like, were you in a coma for the past entirety of the show's existence? Have Have you noticed that everything you love is made by liberal Jews and black people, yeah. like, your entire Re- life? Remember that time, the most <laughs> loved Star Trek ever, or maybe the second most loved Star Trek ever, the original season, was hated by the entire nation because it had a black woman on it? <laughs> Well, also by a liberal Jew, um, like yeah. like all 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 of Marvel uh, and all of DC uh, <laughs> by New York liberal Jews, uh, yeah. like um, like all of your favorite characters are me by liberals. When did, uh, when I, did I, Captain I, America get political? Uh, he he's literally been punching Nazis since before everybody was born. Um, like I, I don't. Yeah, like, that's true. Every, everyone, like, in the current timeline, like, he's older than anybody. He's from the 40s, and he's still a young man. <laughs> well, he's also one of the oldest superheroes. I mean, other than Superman and Batman and, you know, a couple of the Golden Age DC characters. Yeah, he's from way uh, back he's when, like, yeah. He, he's back from when Marvel was called Timely Comics, so... I, I don't um, think he actually did anything with punching Nazis in his comic, but that was very famously sure on his cover. He punched Nazis all the time. Well, I, on issue uh, one, though, but like that—that that was the awesome cover. But I don't think he did anything of the sort in the actual story of that one. Probably not in that story, but I'm sure he fought fucking Nazis. That's oh yeah, well yeah, well the, the, Red, the Red Skull's entire existence, yeah. I mean, uh, uh, Hydra is just modern Nazis. Yeah. Um, oh, by the way, <laughs> speaking of, I, I also got a kick out of how in the original, like like in the in the Captain America movie, not the original one, but the MCU one, because there were older Captain America movies. But I like in the MCU one, they they winked at him punching Hitler by doing it in like yeah. theatrical demonstrations. He just punched like some some dude dressed up as him for the benefit of an <laughs> yeah. audience. That was pretty great. <laughs> with with the but... the symbols crashing with the hit, like this comical effect it was amazing. Yeah, I, I what I don't get is like how how people have been like uh, are looking at things such like the the people that have argued uh, like. I, even before this, I, I I saw people like arguing about um, uh, like RoboCop. Like R- RoboCop's never been <laughs> never been political. What are you even talking about? It's made by a Holocaust survivor commenting on how modern corporatism in the eighties is terrible well, and will well, take the, over the world. Well, the the thing is though, a lot of people I think missed that. They just thought it was like a cool robot fighting bad guys. Even though, like when you look at it now, it's pretty obvious it's like starship troopers people didn't realize Made it was by the satire same when it's like dripping with satire they thought it was like a straight it's up made by movie. the same guy Nah, that's why i brought it up but like yeah. that like it's people at the time thought it was like an okay b movie that had these very satirical like 1950s style propaganda commercials but they didn't realize the whole rest of the movie was satire too <laughs> Yeah, I mean, like, it, it's all about how, like, the government cons you into fighting for them, <laughs> like, yeah. essentially. Uh, you know, you, you can't even have a baby without uh, without going well, through Remember the their advertisements? Like, join the military and, like, and be guaranteed yeah, become a citizenship. Citizen. Yeah. yeah, yeah, become a citizen. Yeah, um, yeah, crazy. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't know, 
where these people crawled out of where like you know their their favorite stuff is isn't political i mean like x-men is all all, all about x-men uh, lays it on pretty thick a- a- x-men has always been about the civil rights movement and uh, yeah, and, and they they and they switched it to kind of, like they they kind of like made like gay allusions in the in the movies, but like sure. the the literal opening scene of X Men One was like the Holocaust at the time with a young Magneto. Yeah, I mean, come on, like it's the first scene in the entire movie is the Holocaust. It's like, oh, hmm. Yeah, I, I don't I don't know what people are so upset about. Uh, honestly, um. Uh, I don't know. This is a re- weird world where people are literate, but I don't think they uh, like look in depth to things very well. Uh, yeah, I want to see more pew pew in the Star Wars. <laughs> and uh, you know what? Somebody brought up the. Uh, I was like, I'm trying to think of like why, why this is such a weird thing for uh, going around. And, and somebody like finally said it and made it make sense to me. Like, like something like um. Like forty percent of the really huge Star Wars fans are just fans of the Empire. Like they're they're fans of the bad guys. They're well, not fans uh, of like well, anything honestly, the good guys do. I mean, like it's always fun to like the bad guys because they get to be more theatrical than the cool. good guys. But like what what I think the actual reason is is that people don't like change. Because remember yeah. when she joined Star Wars and everybody bitched about like. <laughs> Oh, now we're getting political with a strong woman in Star Wars, and now everyone's crying. The same people that hated her for joining now hate Disney yeah. for making her leave. I mean, uh, we everybody knows our our, our uh, stance on things. I can't believe I, mean, I can't believe the Mandalorian is getting SJW by having a tough woman on it, and now I can't believe the Mandalorian is getting SJW by not having a conservative on it anymore. It's like okay. I, it, it's not even that it's more like she's just she's crazy like you don't yeah have but to be i'm, I'm talking about crazy. well well no that's true yeah it's not because she's conservative but that's the easy excuse to use because you don't want it's to because admit she's that spouting nonsense being a transphobic online. lunatic and like, yeah I, she's like a conspiracy theory hate. like election was faked crackpot like you don't want to have to admit that you're supporting a crackpot so you're like oh it's because she's on the right isn't it yeah that's why she was on the show for two or three seasons okay yeah yeah, I, I just don't get the people that need to think that they need to buy into that garbage in order to be a conservative. It doesn't make sense to me. Yeah, um, they didn't have to do that you don't 10, need 20 to. years ago. Yeah. You, you, you can you could just be about, uh, you know, a conservative budget. Yeah, you, you um, can be about not <laughs> wanting radical changes without being, like, an actual moron. <laughs> I, I, I yeah I don't I don't like conservative don't you know understand. you want to conserve you don't want change you want to keep things the way they are I get it that doesn't involve being a moron <laughs> I, uh, and b- believing you know all the all the I'm not even gonna get into all the all the different conspiracies the- theories that I see here like yeah, if anything that's cases. radical ironically yeah well yeah <laughs> there you go but anyway um moving on from that we have some better uh stuff to talk about well well, um, well, we have... well j- just so we don't have mood whiplash i do want to bring up one other thing that we have a few bullet points down while we could talk okay. about being political there's this game that was pitched for 2009 called Six yeah Days i don't know Fallujah. anything about this i don't know yeah. anything about this well that's because it was was canned at first but there's this game called six days in fallujah that was going to be released but like that was extremely controversial at the time because it was about like the battle in Fallujah in uh, Iraq or actually let me, let me double check this so I don't look like a jackass which country Fallujah is in it is Iraq I was gonna say Iraq Iran it's Iraq um and they were gonna have like a game made about that but like 2009 and remember like that's that's like not peak war in the Middle East but it was still pretty hot and so we're like, we're not going to release that fucking now. Are you fucking kidding me? So, like, they're... they're it's they're just tone deaf. Uh, incredibly so. But there's talk yeah. about how it's going to be released, like, some like I don't know about this year, but, like, it, it's going to be released. It was announced for release. And people still think it's in poor taste. Uh, and more recently, the one of the devs or the head of the company or whatever the hell it was made an announcement that they don't... They're, like, they're not trying to make a political commentary. But, like, I want to bring up two things about that. They're kind of the same thing, but I'm going to come from a different direction. Remember how we already had this discussion about Tom Clancy's The Division 2? We're not trying to be political, says Ubisoft, about this 
military campaign video game, and it's like, are, are you an idiot? But the thing is, the one defense that I will give to The Division 2, which is not a very good defense, okay, this is a shitty defense, but I'm going to announce what it could count as some kind of defense, is that the conflict in The Division 2, at least, was fictional, even if the armies are real. But Fallujah fucking happened. I, I mean, Fallujah's a city, but, like, the battle in Fallujah happened, and it was a particularly bloody battle. So you're not trying to be political with, like, a real-life battle in a real-life war? What the fuck is this game about, then? Like, uh, imagine this. What if it did not take place in Iraq, right? Like, what if we made a different video game? I'm gonna make a military shooter about the Civil War in America, or I'm gonna make a military game that starts with 9-11 in America, but I swear it's not political. Like, are, are you fucking kidding? Like, what do you think yeah. this is gonna be? Like, get the fuck- like- just just, just be upfront about it. Don't try saying that it isn't what it is. I still think this game is in poor taste, but don't, like, very obviously lie about it. Even if you don't intend to have some sort of propaganda message, number one, everything, everything is political, whether it's subtle <laughs> or not. Number two, yeah. this is a literal even if it's unintentional war that happens <laughs> even if it's unintentional uh, like you're coming from a certain perspective well, I, I was gonna say like is my player something. character the good guy am i an american I guess it's political like what the fuck are we doing here so like don't try to say that an actual political event like a pretty famous one that people have heard of it's one of the things that has a name like the Battle of Fallujah, like we aren't really sure. naming our conflicts anymore. This one has a fucking name. Don't try saying it's not. Well, he didn't say not political, but he's not trying to make a political commentary. Even if you're not trying to, you are, buddy. Like it's happening. I mean, you're the good guys. Um, well, that, that's what know, I'm saying. Even like, saying who the good guy is. is, is that, that's what I'm saying. I, I'm, yeah. I'm really hoping it isn't a good guy, bad guy thing, because that'll be in, like, legendarily poor taste. If, if they try to have perspectives but, from like, either even side, just have but a, still. Have a per, having a protagonist is, like, is already a political Yeah, I thing. hope this guy lives. Like, well, yeah. that That's why Stupid. Spec Ops the line, Spec Ops the line, like, the game was about how war is shitty and you are also shitty, whether you intended to be or not. <laughs> Yeah, like, because you're participating in it. Yeah, like, and that wasn't even picking a side in the war as far as I know. That was just like, this sucks, you suck, it all sucks. <laughs> and that was yeah. intended to be a political message. Yep, yep, yep. I th uh, and and I, they, I, they had little jabs in the loading screens, too. They're like, what do you feel bad about killing these people for? It's just a video game, and you're just like, ugh. <laughs> you feel like <laughs> shit. Ugh. All right. Well, um... To a uh, uh, happier discussion. Yeah, now on... for real to get to the, the good <laughs> stuff. Yeah, the um, new uh, updated near replicant uh, finally got a trailer. Uh, yeah, was this had... the gameplay trailer? I found like a nine minute trailer. This game. Yeah, it, it has lots of gameplay in it. Yeah. Okay, yeah, I, I didn't really bother watching it because I've already played the game. I mean, all I can tell you is that it certainly looks crisper and it's smoother. Uh, and you're playing as young near instead of old near. Otherwise, I've seen the game, but it's cool that, yes, we're moving along. This looks cool. There, I, I hope there will be better farming. <laughs> farming was kind of obnoxious. Oh, oh, do you mean literally, like, the flowers? Yeah, just like what you had to do to farm in the original near was just stupid. That was atrocious. The amount of spamming I did of changing the clock on my PS3, like... That was awful. I, I, bet really awesome. I bet you it doesn't change. I bet you it doesn't change. That that was awful. And and like there there's there's like and you don't really have to do any of that. It's for side missions, but there is a trophy where you can go further than that and the percentages of getting the thing you want. Like you're literally doing hybrid farming by planting flowers of two different colors next to each other and waiting I forgot, six or twelve hours. Like real time which is why I adjusted my clock. It's like in Metal Gear Solid 3, if you wait literally 24 hours, or maybe it was a couple days or something, without playing the game, then the end just dies of old age. Or you could futz with your PS2's clock. Same thing for Nier, and it still sucked. <laughs> wow. But, and, uh, and, yeah, and results I mean, were not I, guaranteed, either. I'm excited percentage. about this because, first of all, it'll give a, a new generation of people, like, you know, 
a, a an opportunity to play this, especially if they played, um, you know, the, the sequel. And, yeah, Automata. Um, but speaking Automata. of which, by the way, is 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 near three hundred and sixty uh, compatible with the current Xbox? Uh, PS3 is obviously not compatible with PS4, but Xbox, correct. do we at least have a chance? Um, let me see. I can check yeah. the... But, but either yeah. way, this will be a fresh take with new content. There will be a, something that ties this game to Automata somehow. I honestly don't think it's necessary, but it does bring in people like me who are like, Oh, new content. I should buy this game again. <laughs> yeah, let me take a look. I don't think it is, because uh, okay. uh, I, 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 I would have bought it. Um, okay, for okay. Xbox because I, I I have a PS3 copy. That's um, right, and your PS3 is like a little iffy. Um, well, no, it, it, it's more like it's it's an OG PS3, and so I I don't want to like risk anything. Well, that's what I'm saying. Um, yeah. Yeah. um but uh, I I will say for people who aren't as familiar with the original Near, because that was a pretty underground game even at the time. Even now, it's like oh, there was an earlier game because Near Automata I think only really got as popular as it did, especially in the West, because it was platinum games and like oh, the people who made Revengeance and all uh, Bayonetta and all that crazy shit sure i'll play another platinum games game and then they realized how damn good it was and they're like oh there's another near so by by the way calling it now people are going to be disappointed by gameplay because it's not platinum games even though it still plays well but it is not platinum games gameplay i will say this though near automata some of has the best music ever just i was just gonna mention that yeah near automata has some of the best like one of the best soundtracks like ever Honest opinion. Honest opinion here. Automata may have one or two tracks that trump even the original Nier, but I think the original Nier, I might like the soundtrack even more. It's close, and it's the same composer. Like, certain moments hit harder in context in Automata, but OG Nier just, it, oh man, it is so good, and the music is even more melancholy. It, it's one of the best soundtracks I've ever heard. OG um, Nier, man, look up. It's really, really fucking good. There, there's a track. It's called "Those Wretched Automatons" or just "Wretched Automatons" or something. Oh my god, look that one up. And then of course there's the Shadow Lord theme. Like that's a boss theme. So like, eh, spoilers if you don't want to. Like if you want to be surprised by the music in context, but that's also one of the best tracks in the game. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so um. Apparently, Nier is not backwards compatible. Uh, so yeah, it's a shame, um, but it's coming yeah. out soon anyway. Yeah, no. Well, I, I'm, I'm happy that I don't have to, you know, play it on a PS3. And um, uh, so, yeah, so yeah, it is. This, it's this very, 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 very good. It is. It's gonna feel a little weird playing as like Pretty Boy Nier instead of Dad Nier, but it's it's the same game. Otherwise, you're saving your sister instead of your daughter, but it's the same game. And Kaine, and Grimoire Vice, like and Has, Nier, their voice actors are way too good. I don't know what young Nier is yeah, going to sound like because I've never acting. heard it before, but the voice acting is killer, superb. Kine and superb. Vice, a and again, Dad Nier, but we're not going to be playing as Dad Nier in the new game. I'm I'm so excited. Not to uh, mention to Emil. Play, play this game. Emil's great. Yeah, it's going to be good. All right. Well, uh, moving on from that, there was also a Final Fantasy fourteen trailer that you mentioned. Yeah, I forgot to mention this last week, but um, they're going to the moon, baby. So, uh, <laughs> what is it? A Final Fantasy four? That's uh, what I was wondering. Reference? I mean, I, I don't yeah. know much about FF fourteen. I just wanted to mention that we're doing moon stuff in FF fourteen. This, this game is <laughs> fucking wild. Considering how shitty this game was at launch, FF fourteen was like an embarrassment among MMOs. This is like. It just keeps getting cool. Like, I'm, I I don't play MMOs. I'm not going to play this game myself. But I have to admit, it keeps getting cooler. <laughs> Straight to the moon, Lotus. Yeah, Straight to the moon. Something like that. And Final <laughs> Fantasy XIV was just a euphemism for beating his wife. Um, but, Probably um, my, my, one of my favorite lines. It's so blunt. <laughs> he was a wife beater on that charming TV show. But, uh, the, um... Yeah, and speaking of which, they still have near content. Like, it's really near automata content. But when I was watching uh, my friend Mr. Ryu and a bunch of his like party, like sharing the screen and playing FF14, the near automata stages, there was a lot of stuff I recognized in an FF14 perspective, which was pretty cool. And uh, they brought in some music as well. But there was also the track. I'm actually not gonna name the track because it's like. 
light spoiler, but it's the theme that plays when you beat a boss. That like da 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 da. The one that starts that way in the original mm-hmm. near. I was like, ah, oh, they got original near music. What do you know? <laughs> that was pretty cool. That's awesome. That's awesome. Uh, well, moving on from that, uh, this one's also yours. Yeah, this was disappointing. This news I don't came. Know this yet- one. Yeah, at the, at the time of this recording, which is uh, Monday, this news came yesterday, so when people are listening to it two days ago on Sunday, suddenly uh, there was a, a Kickstarter project called Sharon No Cooney. It was to be a visual novel. Uh, I contributed to it myself. This was way back in 2016. And uh, they, like they've been okay with communication. They haven't done the radio silence thing, but a lot of the communication is like, oh, well, thing, we're, we're encountering troubles or whatever, but like... I don't care. Like if they're telling me, like that's better than that's better than some. Uh, but unfortunately, uh, for people who sprung for a Vita release, uh, that's that's being canceled. Uh, but the good news is they're compensating for it because I was actually one of the people who sprung for the Vita release. They had announced that it was going to be released as a, a limited run games release. That was canceled a while ago. A different company was taking over. But now, due to uh, just some like missing EAS deadline stuff and things like that. It's just not happening. So they're offering uh, refunds for that particular uh, part of the perk or the ability to switch over to the PC equivalent, uh, physical or digital, depending which one you sprung for. So that survey for those backers will go out later. So that's that's cool of them. But yeah, it's a shame. You know, this was going to be a super late feeder release, but oh well. Uh, that's a bummer. That's a bummer. Yeah. Um, that, that's that's I, kind I guess of the Vita... news, but yeah, it sucks. <laughs> eh, eh, Vita, I mean, come on. <laughs> I know, but it's a novelty. Uh, it's it was less of yeah. a novelty at the time, but it's a novelty now. But like, you know, again, they're compensating, but it's eh, not too bad. It, 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 I was a big Vita fan, and and like somebody who who enjoyed it when I when it was around. Well, but it's these aged days now. <laughs> these days, the best thing to do with it is to play like playstation one games on the go honestly um, uh, yeah. um most of the stuff that was released on it is no longer tethered to it um like in the slightest so i uh, i think that um I, I can't think of anything that needs to be um somewhere else you know um uh I, you know uh, book of memories <laughs> like come on uh what else you know what's what funny is... as as much flack as that game gets like that's a way forward title and like way forward is generally very well liked but it's like oh this one was a miss <laughs> yeah it's just bad it's not yeah, good it's um, kind of like um one of the one of way forward's very early titles the the blood rain 2d platformer it's okay but like now when we picture way forward it's like shantae the ducktales remaster but like yeah book of memories it's like mm. <laughs> Yeah, um, I don't know. I, whenever I I, I think about it, like uh, the only thing I ever wanted was a port of maybe Golden Abyss. You know, uh, yes, uh, you I've wanted that for a while. Abyss. Yeah, and uh, like they're never gonna do it. Um, I actually would I, like a port of memory, uh, a port of Book of Memories, just for. I mean, easy just access, <laughs> just to have it somewhere yeah, else. I don't. Sure, I don't think but... it's suddenly gonna spring up in popularity, but uh, it would be easier to play it i don't like having to do the grip the controller controls when i don't have a vita <laughs> i have a pstv yeah it, it's like i said the, the best thing to do with a, a vita right now is to play old psp games and old playstation one games i it, it, it it's really the best for that and that's, yeah that's it, it's like it. the wii u has a bunch of uh like what was it what was it like ds games trapped on it the vita has some yeah. psp games like that's like that's as good as it's gonna get <laughs> yeah and and like you know there's some criminally uh like forgotten about ps psp games uh you know there's some like really good stuff on there that never got a chance elsewhere so um i i'm you know inclined to to believe that you know there, there should be something yeah you know, it's something else to do there but i don't know it's it's these days i i i think it's uh, i don't know i've given up on the vita i i I just i have nothing nothing to go back to for for it other than play the psp um stuff you know that i missed that's about it you know um if i'm gonna play persona 
um, five golden or four golden. Yeah, four golden, which on, is now on PC. I'm, I'm gonna play it on PC. Yeah, I mean, oh, why would I torture yeah, and, myself? By the way, um, now that we're done with Sharon no Kuni, one thing I completely forgot to mention, uh, which is not on the notes either, because I forgot to mention it, but a bunch of Kingdom Hearts titles are getting freaking PC releases. Can you believe that? <laughs> Yeah, I mean, um, uh, I think Microsoft really, really um, is, is trying here. It, it's trying to get a lot of uh, Japanese stuff that never came to Xbox and PC platforms. Like um, Kingdom Hearts, man. I never thought I'd see the day. Well, uh, and by, by the a... way, so someone had mentioned in the modding community, you know, how there are a lot of games where you mod things by changing like character models and stuff. The possibilities are fucking endless with Kingdom Hearts. <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, I, I think the uh, the big thing is that um, there is a strong rumor going around that um, that Microsoft is looking to buy some studio, like some big company. Yeah. Um, so um, whether it be, I mean, uh, you, you've heard me say that I, I think Valve is a possibility. Yeah, you did mention that one or two weeks uh, ago. I mean, if they if they got Valve, uh, that would be a huge, huge fucking deal. Um, it could be Sega. Uh, a lot of people are, are kind of like banking on that, but there there are even some people that are like that are talking about the possibility of Sony buying out uh, Square Enix, um, which. I, uh, that would be weird, I, especially now that yeah. Kingdom Hearts went on to PC five minutes ago, or has been confirmed for PC. I don't think. Ago. I honestly don't think any of these are is going to be ha happening. But uh, Valve being owned by Microsoft just seems like it would be something that that Microsoft would really want to happen. Um, now, uh, Valve is not a cheap company, so in order to in, in order to buy them I'm, I'm sure uh it would it would be very e even for a company like microsoft one of the biggest companies in the world um it would be tough that, that, that would be a huge purchase but they still might be able to do it i mean Val valve is a privately held company uh so it is one of the very few like big video game companies that isn't um publicly traded yeah um so uh we don't know much about their financials at all um so who knows? Um, moving on from that. Uh, oh yeah, this is a this is a good one. Uh, so it seems like we're getting closer and closer to a confirmation of the great Ace Attorney uh, for the West. Yeah, that would be but amazing. Yeah, we 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 uh, we have uh, the Taiwanese rating board uh, rated it for uh, Switch, PS4, and PC. So yeah, and, I, I and think considering it, that Taiwan is not China, uh, is not Japan, but Asia, that implies that it might get even if it doesn't it make officially make it to English. the West, it might get like English subs anyway. Yeah, that's true. A lot of the Asian, um, uh, a lot of the Asia territory uh, titles end up usually having English as one of the options. Yeah, like I, uh, I imported, for example, the trilogy uh, on PS4, and not only does it have an English option. But I guess the the game read my system or vice versa because it defaulted at English for me, which is pretty yeah. great. I I think this would be really awesome. What it was, so I think the Great Ace Attorney is going to be a collection. I think it has both games on it, right? Um, that at least sounds both right. I I didn't even realize there was more than one game until I saw that announcement. There were two. Yeah. Could we also, um, by the way, number one consoleize? every game but while we're on that topic can we also maybe localize uh miles edgeworth too yeah so um there are a few games that are are have been marooned um have been locked to their platform uh the biggest one is the fourth game in the series uh the fourth game in the series has been uh locked uh to the original ds uh that is the uh apollo justice game well every, every uh, phoenix wright game except for the trilogy and the Layton crossover have been locked as far as i'm aware that, right uh well the Layton crossover has not been ported to anything other than the, the oh duh that's 3ds sorry yeah, yeah. Like, yeah so the, only the trilogy has ever been ported, ported multiple elsewhere. times fucking yeah. WiiWare. but yeah like every phoenix wright game is trapped 
outside of the yeah. trilogy, I think. Yeah, Miles Edgeworth 1 and 2. Uh, 1 uh, did get an official translation over here. Uh, yeah, two, I, w- I was just going to say... 2 has what, a fan translation. Yeah, I was going to mention, not only did 2... Not only is 2 trapped to its console, but it's trapped in Japan. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, there are a few that that really, really need porting and, and upgrading. And uh, the fourth game is one of my favorites in the series. It might be my favorite. Um, I know that is not a popular opinion. I know a lot of people really like the first game and, and the third game. Um, I really like five a lot as well because it brings all the characters back together again. Oh, that's um, always fun. Yeah. I, I, I so, love when and, series do that. Like, you can only do that if you're long-lived. Otherwise, the moment doesn't have yeah. weight. But it's cool to take a break. And then well, bring it well, back. It's a feel-good moment. Four is like the Street Fighter three of of it uh, of the series. You know, it, it has all new characters, and that's why some people don't, don't like. Oh, ah, uh, okay. I, I like the new characters. Um, and is it Phoenix, is it like Street Fighter three in that every single character is a very obvious analog of a character we know? <laughs> kind he's of. Not uh, he's Necro. Oh, okay. I mean, he's not Guile. He, he's Remy. Oh, fine. <laughs> Um, Apollo has a rival just, just like, uh, you know, his rivals, uh, you know, just like Miles Edgeworth is his rival. He has, he has a rival and his, his rival's awesome. He's really, he's one of the best characters in the series. Nice. Uh, so, so like the, the third, the, the fourth game is just really cool. And I, I think what people didn't like about it is they kind of gave, um, like in the meantime, um, like Phoenix has has a lot of tragedy happen in his life so he kind of has like a, a darker edge to him than in the original um, trilogy and um uh because he he had shit happen to him in between the two games okay. uh and so he's not the protagonist in this game he's kind of the mentor that makes um, me think of uh yakuza 5 where kiryu is still playable but you're like, what happened to him between Yakuza 4 and now? Like, this is wildly different. Yeah, uh, he even looks a lot different because he's kind of, like, lost his way. I have uh, seen he's this. He's, he's just kind of slumming it, yeah. Yeah, he has, like, you know, just, yeah, like, clothes. sweats and stuff. Yeah, 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 yeah. exactly. Um, and he's wearing, wearing, like, a hat. You know, he's just, like, you know, he, he looks like he's slumming it. Yeah, exactly. So, um, but... I, I think the game had a lot of charm, and it also, like, the animation is, like, second to none. The animation that it has probably the best 2D animation of the series, because after that, they went to 3D models. Okay. Um, so, it, it is the best-looking 2D game by by a long shot. I really love the the, the way that the characters gesticulate and, and uh, the style of it. Um, it's also, like, slightly in the future, so there's some cool stuff that they do with that. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it's just a neat game. I, I and I, I feel like it doesn't get its due, so I, I hope that's coming uh, eventually. Moving on from that, uh, this is another one you put in here. Uh, you, you actually had most of the uh, news items. This, yeah, that this never weekend. happens. But yeah. um, yeah, I just saw an announcement that Metro Exodus, sometime in the spring, is going it's to the get third an... game, right? Uh, jeez. The first one is just called 2033. It, the second one is Last Light. So, yeah, I guess Exodus is the third one. Yeah, it was the game that was uh, famously not released on Steam. Um, yeah, it was the Epic... Ex- it, was the, it was the Steam, except until it was Epic, because fuck you. And now I think it's probably available on everything again. But yeah. uh, it's going to get an enhanced PC edition coming to Epic, Steam, and GOG uh, sometime in the spring. I, I either don't know the date or forgot. Uh, and if you already I've own it, I've always wanted to then... play these games. Hmm? I've always wanted to play these games. I've yeah. never gotten a chance. And if you already own it, then the upgrade will be free. Uh, and cool. it'll have ray tracing, enhanced uh, DSLS 2.0 support, or DSL or whatever the hell it was. I don't. I forgot what the fuck that was called. Something with AI. Uh, and if you play it on PS5 and Xbox Series X, then it'll get a 4K and 60 FPS uh, update as well. So yeah, that, that's oh, very cool. Neat. Yeah, very neat. Uh, I I'm excited because I think this generation the uh, the console uh, and and PC are going to be neck and neck at least for a little bit. So um, I'm I'm just excited for that. Um, you know that that parody is going to be really good. So um, I, I I'm I'm never I'm not gonna prefer much on the PC uh, nowadays. Uh, I'm, I'm probably gonna go for uh, console all the way, which um, 
for a while there, I was I was going PC all the way, so uh, I'm kind of excited for that. Um, and this is a series I definitely want to hop into. So, I'll, 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 you know, one of these days I'll delve into it, and then we'll we'll have a corrective about it one of these days. Moving on from that, uh, we did have a Nintendo Online update uh, with the N- Nintendo Channel and Super Nintendo Channels. Uh, there is a single new game for NES, but it's a very good one, uh, and it's also like a good game to have on the service. Uh, do you know anything about Fire and Ice? No, actually, um, for the NES and SNES stuff, I don't know anything about any of them except that they're apparently like rare and obscure games. So even if nobody cares about them because they haven't heard of them, they should it's be excited precisely there. because they haven't heard of them, and these are pretty inaccessible otherwise. <laughs> Yeah, so um, have you ever heard of the, the puzzle title um, by Tecmo called Solomon's Key? I've it's heard the, the one... name, but I don't know if I've seen it played. It's, so it's a, it's a puzzle game where you are uh, you can create blocks. Um, oh, and you, okay, you I think I have. I, I, you know what? I, I think I might have seen the speedrun at a GDQ then. Yeah. Yeah, so this one is um, the sequel. This is this is okay. Solomon's Key 2. It just yeah, I haven't it heard of it. came over... When it came over to the United States, it, it got a goofy renaming, you know, because a lot of times, you know, different companies released different things back then. So uh, this was also a title that was released very late in the NES's life. Uh, you know, might have been like a 95 or, or you know, title um, or, uh, you know, some, something like 93, I, I should say, 93 or 94 um, title. So it uh, it is very expensive if you want a copy of this so uh and it is a fun game a really good game very difficult but it, it it's a it's you know it's a puzzle game so it, it's a lot of fun um so it, it's good that it is on this list because it, it's you know it's a good title the snes titles are weird um yeah I, I, so, again i've never heard of any of these and like i mean i didn't grow up with an snes but I imagine that I've at least heard of most of the titles for this thing, but I've never heard of any of these. Weird, yeah. This, uh, so I would say that Fire and Ice is the best game on the on the entire list. Um, okay. And and any uh, uh, the SNES stuff is weird. Uh, so Doomsday Warrior is a terrible two D uh, fighting game. <laughs> it is an like from from this era. It's it's really really bad. Um, it has some uh, RPG elements, uh, like in between battles, you can upgrade certain stats, uh, but that is the only thing good about it. Like that's okay. the only thing notable about it. It's a, it's very terrible otherwise. Prehistoric Man is another one of those like you know generic caveman platformers from that era. For some, yeah, reason. I don't like, know what was up with that. Like, yeah, on the yeah. NES and the SNES, there's just caveman stuff. Like, Joe and Mac, I think, is yeah one of the only series to actually, like, come out still looking good. I don't know if you... I guess you could count Bonk as caveman, kind Bonk. of. Sure. No, he, he absolutely is. Um, uh, his 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 Japanese name is uh, PC, uh, PC Genjin. It literally means, like, um, like, PC ancient person, you know, like, like prehistoric person fair enough all right uh, yeah <laughs> but uh yeah no he's he's a caveman i mean uh wonder boy uh, is a caveman uh oh, really Nestor higgins is a caveman basically uh you know yeah, uh, kinda, were, i guess yeah there's the you know the caveman olympic games or whatever that was that's what caveman i was thinking games. just this weird schlock game it's like all right uh, big nose caveman uh bc's quest for tires on uh, on the on the coleco vision <laughs> um i don't know anything on the coleco vision yeah, well, the ColecoVision is, out of all the pre-NES stuff, is, like, my favorite. Um, yeah, yeah. Other than arcade. Or, uh, arcade stuff is well. my favorite, but, yeah. Um, yeah, it's, it's weird, you know. And then there's Psycho Dream. Oh, boy. Uh, Psycho Dream is a wolf team joint. Um, oh, the, the Japan. people who localized... Um... Oh no! Come on, Revenge of the Ninja. Yeah, yeah, actually, yeah, they did a lot of work on the Sega CD. Uh, so um, the best Wolf work team... they did, by the way, by far, hands down, the fucking manuals for those games. They're like oh, yeah. more entertaining than the games themselves. <laughs> <laughs> They're giving but, like backstories um... to the random throwaway characters you have to deal with, so they try to give Revenge of the Ninja more of like a story than it has or deserves. Yeah. So Wolf Team. 
and uh, Telenet Japan, uh, Japan. So Telenet Japan made like a lot of stuff uh, from back in the day, and it was kind of um, they made like a lot of crazy stuff, like a lot of weird stuff. So they made Gyrus, which is one of the best shmups on the on the uh, the Genesis. They made El Viento and the, the rest of the uh, uh, was it um, Edward Randy trilogy? I think is what they're uh, called. This is gonna bother me. What does Viento mean? Uh, the wind. Thank you. I, for for uh, some, I was thinking like. I was thinking winter, like in Vierno. I was almost there. <laughs> uh, you were in the right area. Um, yeah, yeah. They made the Valis games for uh, the the Genesis. They, they or Ernest Evans trilogy. I'm sorry. Um, they they did Soul Feast, uh, which is one of the games that I enjoyed um, on the Mega Drive, uh, Mega CD, or Sega CD. Uh, yeah, Time yeah. Gal, Road Avenger. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, and, and again. Man. Man, look up the manual for those games. Time Gals is hilarious because they try to give a yeah. backstory to it. The bit like there, there was this big time machine they had on display as this grand presentation. But oh no, the bad guy took it. Now what do we do? Well, don't worry. The professor had a fucking second time machine in the back that you can use. Like <laughs> what? <laughs> he just had another one. <laughs> I thought it was this grand reveal. Oh, I, I have two. <laughs> okay. <Yeah. laughs> it's the funniest so, thing. Um, Psycho Dream was another one of their weird, weird titles that they put out that, like, um, like, they're not good, but they're really weird and interesting, uh, so it, it, it's like a, you know, a 2D platforming game with really interesting graphics, the art in the game is unlike, it's like, almost like H.R. Geiger plus, uh, like, bubblegum, uh, Japan. Jap- uh, Japanese anime kind of stuff, like. It, well, what do you mean bubblegum? Like that that kind of mech suit thing, like Bubblegum Crisis? No, more like the the aesthetic, like the color the color stuff is like pastels um, rather oh, than like okay, grays. Okay. I was thinking the actual Japanese thing called with bubblegum on the title. Never mind. <laughs> no, no, it just uh, it has um. It looks like yeah, it has a lot of pastel and, and purple. Okay. Uh, pink. Okay. Um, colors in it, and it has like a lot of weird monsters in it. Um, so yeah, it, it, it's Telnet Japan. Uh, so they're 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 weird and they're cool, uh, but like it's not an essential game. It, it is something that is cool to check out, uh, but it is not something that you need to play a lot of. Let's just put it that way. And it only came out in Japan. So this is one of the few um, like import games that uh, America is getting uh, for the from the Super Famicom. So I, I think that's super inter- interesting. And this by, by is of way, course well, well one thing before you get to the last mm-hmm. one. Speaking of import SNES games, you know what I would like to see get imported because I think this might be European only. But that Fireman game because that game looks I kick th- ass. I think that is already on there. Oh, is it really? Uh, that Man. game, that game looks freaking sweet. Yeah, the Fireman or the Ignition Factor. Uh, let me see here. The Where, like your your whole job is being a fireman, and that game makes it look way more engaging than you would think. Yeah, you know what? No, that never came out in the U.S. I think the Ignition Factor came out over over okay, on, okay. on on the on the service. Uh, so that's at least playable. Uh, that's another fireman game for the uh, Super Nintendo. I always get them mixed up. But um, I did want to say uh, quickly that Wolf Team, uh, before uh, they are most famous for making the Tales of series, and I should, I should, um, really, uh, which is also Telemet uh, Japan. Yeah, they 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 made uh, and they still uh, they made Tales of games all the way up to Tales of Zillia for the PS3. So wow. Um, okay. They they were the originator of the Tales of series. They made Tales of Fantasia, Destiny, Eternia, Destiny Two, all, like all the all the ones you liked from back in the day. Symphonia. Um, oh, and by the way, I just want to throw this one out there to yeah. any people Vesperia. not in Japan, which is all of you. Um, Eternia was known in America as Destiny Two, but. Mm. It's not. It's Eternia. There is an actual Destiny 2, which for some reason I don't think we got, even though 
Destiny was apparently popular enough for us to call Attorney a Destiny 2. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, yeah, after Zillia happened, uh, it was merged into uh, Namco Bandai as a, um, you know. As yeah, a, yeah. So they, they, they didn't go away. They just start, got their individual, uh, yeah. individual And speaking of which, it's called away. Bandai Namco now. But, yeah, back then it was Namco Bandai. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, yeah, Bandai Namco is, is, is what it says here. So um, Yeah, but back then it was Namco Bandai. In yeah, fact, yeah, yeah. in one of the games, I forgot which one, there was like a secret area you could go to an island called Namco Band Isle. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> hey! <laughs> but yeah, uh, they, they made uh, Tales of Vesperia, which is my favorite Tales of game. So like, It might have been that one. I, I forgot, though. But uh, yeah, anyway... Um, Wolf Team is a famous developer. Uh, they made all kinds of crazy stuff, though, before this. Uh, so, moving on, um, <laughs> there are some games that Japan is only getting, and this is in the Super well, well, Famicom well, app. Before, before you get to Super Famicom, what was that last game after Psycho Dream? Uh, we did talk about Pre- Prehistoric Man. Okay, Prehistoric, are we got it? Alright. Yeah, yeah, that's the Caveman game that Oh, yeah, yeah, you're bringing up the whole genre. All right, my fault. (laughs) But, yeah, Super Famicom, though, is getting some bangers, I think. Yeah, yeah, Mario Super Picross, which is an awesome game. If you've never played a Picross game, you should do it. It's a lot of fun, especially if there's a touch screen involved. Uh, You will not be upset. It is a lot of fun. Um, It is, you know, a puzzle game where you have to uh, essentially reveal uh, a, a picture um, but yeah. through logic, it's it's really fun. I really love those games. Uh, but uh, they are also getting uh, Shin Megami Tensei two, uh, which is that's a big uh, deal. Really great game, yeah, really great game in that series. So remember um, that time that SMT deal. existed before Persona, <laughs> or or before even you know uh, uh, the third one. So um, that's uh, true. Yeah, the first Nocturne. Yeah, the first game that was straight up called. Shin Megami Tensei that America got was called Nocturne, and yeah, that's the third one. <laughs> yeah, be, uh, after they gave up of, on calling it Revelations in the in the United States, I think there was two Revelations games. Uh, they made Revelations Persona, and uh, they had one game on the Game Boy, I think, Revelations uh, oh, geez, Survival really? or something. Yeah, something like that. Um, moving on from that, I just wanted to quickly mention that Super Mario uh, 3D World did release this week, uh, along with uh, you know the Bowser's Fury um, expansion. I, it was a lot of fun. Uh, I, I I I delved back into it. I was like, I remember why this is so good. Definitely yeah. pick it up if you have a chance. Um, oh, you you put this one in here. I'm a, I'm a little surprised, but Halo 3 yeah. got a map pack. Uh, yeah, for the yeah Halo 3. Not 5, not 6, Halo 3 is getting a map pack for multiplayer for the first time <laughs> since 2009. I don't think it's, it's out amazing. yet, but it's just like, that's funny to me. It's like Age of Empires. Like, oh, we're still updated. What? <laughs> like, it's <laughs> yeah, been over Age a decade, but we're two, doing a new map pack. Right? It was Age of Empires 2. They, uh, they yeah, added two. Like, uh, a huge update to it like about a year ago. Yeah, after like 20 years, it's amazing. So yeah, Halo 3 after 10 years, or a little over 10 years, but yeah, we're doing more multiplayer map packs. People are going to flip over that. Uh, and uh, next one is 8-Bit Mods uh, came out with a pre-order for uh, a new PS1 memory card project uh, called the PS1 Memory Card Pro, uh, which is one of the coolest ideas, and I'm really glad that it it, it, it is a thing. Um, yeah, I this missed is out on the a pre-order, genius though. idea. I missed out on the pre-order though; it's already sold out. Um, is it were you really? Able to get one? Yeah. Yeah, I got one. Yeah. Oh, I, I, I'm I'm upset that I didn't. I didn't, I didn't realize that it was like a, a limited pre-order. Yeah, neither did I, uh, or else I would have jumped on it immediately. But uh, essentially, what it is is it's it's a it's a memory card for PS One that will um, have like a gigantic. Um, amount of memory on it uh, because you will be able to That's use it. an SD card and uh, transfer saves and do all kinds yeah. of things. It's it, like it's funny because in retrospect, it seems so obvious. You know, people have been using SD cards to put actual games on, but like, but for a memory card though, and as the the website's pre-order page even said, you know, PS One memory cards are not very big, and there no. are some games like Hexen where a memory Take file a is <laughs> the entire card. Yeah, like, yeah. fuck you. So, like, the idea that you could just 
have so much space. That would be amazing. Uh, I assume they're going to be able to compensate for things like Suicoden 2 having save data from Suicoden 1. Like, I don't see why not. Yeah, why not? Um, and people were wondering, I saw in the Discord group I was in, someone was wondering if it would work for Metal Gear Solid. Like, I see you've played Castlevania. Like, hopefully. Oh, I, I think it only has, like, one page at a time. It's like those multi-cards from, like, back in the day. Um, okay. So, so like, you could page through them. I think there's a button. Uh, there are buttons on it. Um, if if I remember right. If right there, so, you, so you'd have little, to... Little... So, you, so you could fit everything? You just have to organize it right to make it work? Yeah, so you have to page through. Uh, if you take a look, there's a buttons on uh, the left and right uh, okay. Of, okay. of the memory card slot. Uh, so this is to page forward and page back. So, like, if you are looking at it, like, in the... In the browser, um, you could you could page forward to the next um, page. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Uh, so I I would assume that whatever page that you're on is the one that it looks at because that's that that's that would make sense. Yes. Yeah, so if you have data in the wrong place, it might not recognize it, but exactly. you should be able to fix that. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. You okay. Should be able to okay. Move around. And uh, I I think the the best thing about this is like you used to have to in order t- to store your your saves uh, and, and and move them around. You used to have to, to buy something called a Dex drive, which is really rare and expensive these days. Yeah, wow, I forgot um, that existed. Yeah, yeah, and that was from back then. Uh, so we didn't have a, like a modern device that could do this kind of thing. So, um, like, let's say if you wanted to get um, for fighting games, you know, a, a save with all the unlocked characters, it was very difficult to do that kind of thing. So um, that that's one of the major things I would want this for. Um, and, and also to, you know, save my um, my game saves, you know, and, and back them up. Um, well, so... the, well, the thing is, if you have, um, I mean, if we're talking SD cards here, I mean, if you go to GameFAQs and other places like that, there are, like, downloadable saves. Oh, sure. Yeah. You just, it was very hard for you to be able to use them before. And oh, yeah, now, yeah, before, you like, you, yeah, you would need a physical adapter to put it onto a PS1 card. It was like that with the Dreamcast as well. There was a Dreamcast mm-hmm. to PC adapter, which is freaking awesome. But, yeah, like, yeah. if you could do it with SD cards, that would be great. Yeah, so I'm I'm excited for this, and I'm I'm excited for the potential to do this like on on a PS2 card later on, and maybe uh, the Dreamcast yeah. or, or or the Saturn. Um, yeah, PS2 you know. would also be great because that stuff that stuff runs out of memory. The Dreamcast, I, I think there there are Dreamcast memory cards that are not VMUs, right? That they don't have the visual thing. Yeah, so as as far as official ones go, there is a 4X one uh, that is not a VMU. Uh, that okay, has so you four don't... times the memory. Yeah, okay, so you don't require a VMU, it would just be nice. <laughs> yeah, it just would be nice because, like, you you always used to run out of memory card space. Um, yes. Like, back then. Uh, yes. It, on, on Dreamcast, uh, like, something like Shenmue you used up a ton of Shenmue is brutal, space. yeah. Uh, so so uh, that's what I remember. Or especially if you played a game like Jet Set Radio Future also had, like, custom graffiti that you could make in it. Um, oh what like, yeah so like if, uh, if if you were playing jet set radio and um it, you you were not have space in your car to, if you were making a bunch of graffiti so yeah. um, and I'm, I'm also thinking stuff that even had like little extra bits i, I guess this oh, is yeah. kind of like jet set radio future but like sonic adventure one and two had separate data for the chows which yeah, sure. was which was heftier because it was way more customizable yeah, so you, you would either need to have multiple cards, which I did, uh, or you would need one of those 4X cards, or e- even that wasn't very big. Nowadays, there are a lot of options for Dreamcast. Like, you can you can use, like, uh, the Brook uh, controller converters. I actually have a bunch of memory on there for VMU support, yeah, or genius. memory card support, which is really, really awesome. Um, but, uh, yeah, they don't have a way for you to transfer your saves or anything like that, as far as I know. So, um this this kind of thing opens up the possibilities for all all kinds of stuff like this. I I, I didn't I never even thought that this is something that I wanted or needed. And lo and behold, this is something like oh man, this is really great. It's a yeah. little on the expensive side. Uh, it's a seventy dollar item. Yeah, but I, and, I think and it's then worth it's it. like shipping from England, so it's like ooh, but you buy it once. I I think it's worth it considering. Uh, 
especially since Lotus and I are, are basically upgrading our, our PS1s. Um, That's the thing. Like, yeah. you know, the, the, the knee-jerk reaction might be like, but you don't need that if you have a PS3. But, like, we don't own every PS1 game. If you want to play PS import games game, and, and fan translations, you do. That's you know that's mean? the whole thing, yeah. And yeah. the save data really adds up anyway. <laughs> yeah, I mean, um, as of right now, uh, being a PS1 fan is, like, one of the best times ever. Because uh, you can play on ri- original hardware. It has, a, it has an HD, a really great HDMI mod. Um, a... a, uh, a a lot of different options for playing games with, uh, you know, an optical drive emulator. There's like two uh, prominent ones out there. There's the X station and the mode. Um, and yeah, it's just a really good time to, to play PlayStation one games and explore their, the, um, the Japanese library because mm-hmm. there's, there's a, there's a ton of um, even pal games that we never got. So uh, yeah. That, Hell that in English. Yeah. Yeah. There's just tons of them. Um, so, uh, you know, it's, it's time to explore the, the depths of that. And there's a lot of weird stuff in Japan that just never got released anywhere else. Uh, you know, there's oh, a yeah. game where you're flying, flying sneaker. Um, yeah, you know, what the like, fuck? I want to play that. <laughs> yeah. Like, like, you know, cool stuff like that. Oh, and moving on from this, I was actually pretty excited about this. Uh, I, I, I showed this to you and Perry. Uh, okay, that was show, pretty funny. Yeah. But, uh, I, I don't, I, I don't know what your reaction to it was, but I thought it was neat. I didn't jump on it, but I, I, I'm going to wait for reviews to come out on it. But this is pretty cool. It, it, there's a company uh, that is putting up a pre-order for a VCR-DVD combo. Uh, that like Those haven't been made in years. Um, and it has HDMI out. So, like, what even is this? Uh, so this um, is great if you own one of very few movies that never got uh, a DVD or Blu-ray release or streaming version. <laughs> or yeah, and you want to like go, you want to like convert it to digital, but capturing the the video or something like that that could be potentially pretty nice. But like like it's cool in theory, but I'm not gonna jump on it because everything is a DVD player with HDMI out at this point and. My family, like we, we did away with our VHSs. We're yeah. done. Like unless I want to play my Nintendo sixty four promotional tapes, which I'm sure <laughs> have a million they're, uploads they're on digitized. YouTube anyway. Yeah, yeah those have been digitized. But um, I, I I think it's it's really good for people who like crap movies from the eighties and early nineties. Um, you know that that's that's really where a lot of those movies lie, and some some of those you know haven't been released on any other format you know especially if it was like a regional thing like like if, if you got like a promotional tape from like a a local uh you know uh, party planner or something like that. i'm just yeah trying it's to like a five minute long on. tape yeah like sign up for our to our company and get a free thing and then the video's already over <laughs> <laughs> yeah I, I'm, I'm thinking of stuff that red letter media watches uh you know just yeah like, no i was thinking that that shit. like that ice sculpture extravaganza where like the whole thing is like two and a half minutes long like so consider booking us today or whatever <laughs> uh the guy who just makes um like basic ass uh jack-o'-lanterns uh <laughs> yeah but well that, that was that that seemed unofficial but i'm thinking like the uh like the dunkin donuts thing where it's like oh, yeah. a tape for the employees like we yeah, have cool yeah. stuff and get ready to sell them and like it's it's like a minute or like two or three minutes or whatever and the tape's over <laughs> So, so our friend Perry has more of this kind of stuff. He has a, a lot of like VHSs and stuff like that that he he saved up over the years uh, for his collection of crap. He's a fine connoisseur of, of shit. Uh, so I think he, he has still have the Dungeon Master, which makes me very happy. I Although mean, that that's movie not has a... been put on DVD. I, I I I don't even consider that movie shit. That, that's well, that's because it's the, not. It's fucking it's amazing. Just a delight, but. Uh... <laughs> This, this is the kind of thing that would be good for him if it, it the, the problem with this is you don't know what the guts are like on on something like this until you get it um uh i don't know how it generates an hdmi signal and it, it could very well have a really cheap encoder in it and so if if that's the case it's not worth uh purchasing um I don't have any VHSs, so I'm not going to jump on this. I think it's neat. I think it's really cool for people like you know who do the red letter media kind of stuff. 
Or yeah, like, if we still had, like, footage. old family videos or whatever, like, this would be the coolest, but, like, eh, that's, uh, not it, for it, me. It's cool, but it's called the Rad VCR, and I just thought it was neat. Um, and it, it, it is serving a, a certain group of people, so that's that's pretty cool. Um, and finally, uh, <laughs> uh, there has been a Snyder tra- tra- trailer released uh, of uh, the Justice League. Now I'm sold. I'm, I'm going to be there day one. <laughs> So like I'm, I I put this on Twitter, but like, but what if it's just a whole big pile, pile of turds? <laughs> like like in the end, like wh- I don't know what people are hoping for that. I mean, like, this. what did you expect? Also, yeah. like everyone's like, why is this a completely different movie? <laughs> like it's not the Snyder cut; it's like a different movie. Yeah, I mean, he's adding like a uh, like another basically hour and a half worth of footage, which is like its own movie. Did you actually um, watch the trailer, by the way? I did, I did, yeah. Cause like, I I like I swear I thought this was a shit post, but toward the end of the trailer, it's like the Joker reveal. Like, oh my god, the Joker's in this movie. Number one, by the way, he looks and sounds like the Heath Ledger Joker, which is like, hmm, I don't know about this. But I, I uh, think I think it's Jared Leto. As as well, it. yeah, but like he has the Heath Ledger look, and he I think he talks a little more like the Heath Ledger version, a little bit. But he opens with "We live in a society," which has been memes to death for years. I don't even know what that's a... from. Like, what is that? I don't remember. I think I did at some point, but like, the only thing I could think of is, and this is not quite the same thing. So I think I had this wrong. But there was a web comic where, like, when people complain about aspects of their society. Like, this is what's wrong with society. You get some smarmy, pretentious prick who's like, and yet, you live in a society. Hmm, I'm very smart. And it's just like, well, yeah, no shit. But, like, I, I gotta say, we live in a society meme origin. Where the fuck Oh, did so that it's, come it's from? inspired by a change.org petition asking Warner Brothers to make Joaquin Phoenix say, we live in a society in Joker. <laughs> so, like, it, it, it's basically the internet trolling itself about Joker, and then it, like, came back around, and now Joker's actually saying it. So it's, um, it's, it's a wink at that? So it's, like, yes. X-Men 3 having the Juggernaut say on the Juggernaut bitch was, was the worst part of that shitty movie? I mean, but this is already a shitty movie, so who cares? Um, Fair but... enough. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> Uh, but like, but if they wanted the Joker to say it though, then wouldn't that already be a reference to something? Like, where did it originate? Originate from? Um, like, could that have been it? It says typically it's connected to the Joker. Oh, maybe that really was kind of where it was from then. The earliest yeah, I, traces I, of this can be found in. A Hong Kong based meme site Nine Gag in April twenty fifteen, uh, which had an image macro of the Joker. Oh yeah, it's like art of the Joker, which said yeah. when the nice guy loses his patience, the devil shivers, and it's like this ironic Yeah, like Edgelord shit. Edgelord, from yeah, which is very funny. Yeah. So and this it misspells is the kind of patience stuff with A N C E patience. So yeah. like I don't know if that was supposed to be ironic or if that was somebody who endlessly got made fun of for posting that for real. I don't know. That's yeah, funny, no, though. this is just... It was just something that some edgelord came up with back in the day. And All right, well, did... if Zack Snyder is paying service to that, I guess it's a little funnier than I actually thought, but it's, it's still like, funny. dude, the whole reason that exists is to be made fun of, so I don't know what you're doing. <laughs> it's pretty funny to me, um, but... <laughs> We I think it's cool in a society like really <laughs> <laughs> yes we do um but yeah it, it, it's one of those things you, you you point to when somebody wants to sound smart but are actually like has nothing going on well like, yeah they, well this this is those like hashtag i am very smart <laughs> like, yeah, exactly it, it's just like dude you, i'm smarter you than you because i'm aware that you're complaining about a society and yet you're a member of society mm, contradiction in your logic like, fuck you no, you're an idiot like <laughs> you're part of it too you moron yeah uh, like I, get, the, get the fuck out of here but uh yeah it, it, it that's not actually intelligence it's just like you know you, using words that you found on a page and linking them together <laughs> yeah yeah you yeah. don't actually know what you're talking about or, or making any good points but any any anyway uh i i can't get excited about this because you know that i'm a huge dc comic fan 
I love DC Comics. Yeah, but, uh, like, what did you think of the last three Snyder movies? <laughs> well, like, it, it's not even that. It's just, like, they've, they've done so poorly. Uh, they, they, every one of the movies has been lackluster at best. There are two good ones. Two good ones. But, like, well, Wonder, Wonder Woman, Woman 1 and Birds the, of Prey. Wonder Woman 1. Birds of Prey is okay. It, it, it it's it's Shazam, it's an okay then? movie. Um, I Shazam, I really like Shazam. Shazam. I I thought Shazam was really good. So like B- Birds of Prey is like the the one that I I would put in there if I had to pick three, right? Okay. So th- those are those are the three good movies, and even Wonder Woman kind of had a uh, like Deus Ex Machia kind of ending. Um, well, to to uh, to Jenkins's credit, I think she came out later and said that like Wonder Woman mandated that change because there had to be like a climactic fight at the end. So like the one part of the movie that nobody liked was like not her fault. <laughs> it doesn't matter. It just wasn't good. Yeah, that, still that wasn't make, good. still still made it fucking lame. Considering the yeah. entire movie is about the evil in men's hearts and what makes us do these things, and then the end of the movie was like, oh well, a bad guy's doing that. Punch him and <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> Yeah, she she had to be fighting Mars, uh, you know, whatever. Um, I, um, I thought Ares, that... Wonder Woman is Greek, not Roman. I am very F- smart. F- fuck off. Um... <laughs> actually, she's... Actually, wait a minute. That said, though, her name is Diana and not Artemis, which is a little funky. <laughs> I mean, I, I guess Diana works more colloquially, like, outside of Greece, that, I, huh, I never really thought Come about on. that. And there is another character in that series called Artemis. So, hmm. Uh, I mean, the the second Wonder Woman movie had uh, had she had more control over, it and it was it was not that great. So uh, it I was mean... a magical wishing stone. <sighs> like I, the thing is, I can easily buy that in a Wonder Woman movie. Every superhero has had hokey stories. Like of I, I don't have a, I don't have a problem with what the Wonder Woman. 1984 movie was what i have a problem with is that it's part of this super serious universe and that movie itself took this magical wishing stone like very seriously and it's like look yeah. at, look, look at what this is like what is this um yeah i mean uh suicide squad is one of the worst ones uh, uh batman v superman is not good um man of steel is okay um not terrible but okay uh you know like you see see like there's not been a really good one and and except for except for Shazam which is barely connected to the continuity barely yeah I actually question to... whether he'll ever interact with any of the grim dark justice league well they're making a sequel so it, it, you know well but, the sequel uh, will probably follow its own thing cuz like don't even touch the rest of this fucking universe <laughs> Yeah, I mean uh, the the I mean the the Joker movie was really good, but that's an Elseworlds. Yeah, that's movie. not. Yeah, that was shown to be not part of the extended universe. They 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 said it at the beginning. It, it, it's an Elseworlds movie. Uh, yeah, which, I mean it's a uh, different actor playing the Joker doing his own thing. It's like, yeah. come on now. <laughs> which is pretty funny considering like the Elseworlds like um, imprint hasn't been used for a long time. So it, it's yeah. pretty cool that they did that um, because that used to be. For anybody who doesn't know, that that was used in the 80s and 90s as an imprint for what if stories. Like I, um, I, I was like, just gonna say, if you've ever heard of Marvel's What If, yeah. Elseworlds is DC's What If. Yeah, it's like what if Batman had gotten bitten by Dracula. Uh, that's yes. actually one Which, of the. Yeah, literal I was just gonna mention Elseworlds. that was a real thing. Uh, right along yeah. there with Wolverine's What If, Wolverine was Lord of the Vampires. <laughs> yeah, why not? So, um. There are some really famous Elseworld stories. I mean, Kingdom Come, I believe, is one. Um, and there's a, there's Red Sun, where where Superman lands in Russia rather than America. Um, yeah, that's amazing, and he's built uh, up yeah. on different countries' values. Yeah, so El- Elseworlds is was a wonderful imprint uh, where they could do a they had a lot of artistic um, uh, freedom to do whatever they wanted with the character, and uh, most of them were uh, comics code, even when that was. Uh, a normal thing. Uh, DC played around with with cer- certain certain uh, branches of their comics did not have comics code authority, uh, um, whereas their ma- mainstream comics uh, almost always did. So um, that was like a big deal back in the day. So they could, they could curse and and have uh, violence in them and and nudity. Uh, so uh, it, it it was more like your R rated like 
and it wasn't Ed's Lordy. It, it was like you know, just it, it could it could express more. Um, is is the way that it turned out, and it was a great imprint. So, and I I liked that movie. I I, I thought Joker was good. I, I didn't think it was amazing, uh, but I thought it was really good, and I thought the acting was phenomenal. I, I yeah, it was really good. Um, but you know, what they need is they need people who love this and want to make this a thing. A- Aquaman was. Uh, okay at best it was you know they need they need leadership like marvel has with the russo brothers um and like john favreau um who over oversaw everything and and gave a framework um and made it good and and made sure each movie was good um there are very few i don't even think there are truly bad marvel movies uh the like the, the worst of them like you know thor 2 people point at thor 2 yeah not the that worst bad. ones are like yeah I'm not it's not that bad. It. it's yeah. not as bad as you know justice league was or or, or, oh, or suicide squad it, 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 suicide squad is garbage <laughs> like there's nothing on that level with marvel uh so uh i'm 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 disappointed that that dc's squandered itself uh because they have the best properties around i mean batman is like an easy sell you can make an easy bat batman movies are easy to ba- cash in on because he has great villains and you could you could do so many different things with batman um great great characters just like everybody loves batman to begin with you already have an advantage everybody loves batman um i'm a huge batman fan and you know they they've screwed it up um, I don't know. You know, uh, I'm gonna get off this because <laughs> we're running. Yeah, what? Well, um, heavens, look here. at the time. <laughs> I, I, but I, I'm not looking forward to Snyder Cut. I mean, get real. Uh, he he's made a couple decent movies. Uh, you know, he made uh, the the Watchmen movie was good. Uh, it's the Watchmen good movie was the Watchmen movie was good, even though the Watchmen were weirdly superheroes, which makes no fucking sense. But otherwise, overall, the movie was good. There's small gripes. 300 was also good. 300 was good. Uh, you know, The Dawn uh, of the Dead remake was mostly good. I like that movie yeah. quite a bit. Yeah. He's made There were some, some stupid decisions movies. made in that movie like by the characters, but I, I like the movie quite a bit. Um, but then he, he has also a lot of garbage out there. I mean, the, 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 the things that people point to, like Sucker Punch, that's the prototypical Snyder movie. Like, it's, it's just, it looks pretty and it's really dumb. Yeah. Let's interrupt the movie with uh, a concept trailer for a like a 3d yeah. cg cutscene of a video game and then I, there's I was... giant samurai robots fighting what the fuck it's basically like music video of the movie um yeah that, like, that literally yeah i i i, I would considering I would those are supposed that. to be like stand-ins for when she's dancing it almost literally is a music video yeah it's music video of the movie which is not something that you know people want <laughs> All right. Well, uh, I think that's good. Uh, how about you? Anything else that you want to bring up? Uh, no, I think I'm good. The only other thing I'll say is that um, as of the 14th, and I'll say this every year, but I don't know why I started uploading videos on February 14th, but I have celebrated 11 years of having uploaded videos. Hooray. That's awesome. I did. That's awesome. It. Well, we, 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 we've been doing uh, the podcast for five years, right? Yeah, it's incredible. Yeah, that, and we've never missed a week. We, we've nope, been here the whole nope, time. Nope, nope. And also one other minor thing, because you occasionally mention when you advance in like like a dragon and stuff like that. So I'll just mention, I started Little yep. Nightmares 2. That game came out like 10 seconds ago. It's more Little Nightmares. If you like Little Nightmares, I think you're going to like Little Nightmares 2. It's looking very fun. It's got creative levels. Way longer levels than the original game had. Uh, and delightfully creepy enemies. Uh, I should give an update on Yakuza Like a Dragon because I played a bunch of that this weekend. I actually had some time to play some video games for once. Hmm. Um, I uh, am moving along in the storyline. I'm, I'm I'm at the old folks' home uh, in Chapter 4, I think. Um, right, so like, we mentioned this last time, super early in the story, but there's so much stuff to do before you get to that point. Oh, I'm doing and in all fact, the there's so much stuff. stuff that you should do before you get to that. So now that you're actually advancing the plot, that's going to be the entire game, by the way. Like, you're going to beat that dungeon or that chapter, and then you'll be like, okay, new chapter. And then there's all this side stuff to do, and it'll take forever for you to advance in chapter 
next. And I that, mean, that's how I played the game myself. My, my, my favorite uh, side story yet. Oh, I laughed out loud. Uh, it's probably the, I mean, it's probably the one that people know about just because of screen crap captures, but uh, it involves um, some, some Yakuza who love to be pampered. <laughs> yeah. That, that's a callback to uh, Yakuza 2 actually. Yeah, yeah. The, they're That's dressed the same up as, guy. Dressed up as babies. <laughs> you, you know what threw me, by the way, is um, I've played Yakuza 2 and I've played Kiwami 2. You fight those guys. I was pretty nervous because that guy's a pretty decent fighter in Yakuza 2. Like, he's, he's kind of scary. Yeah. So in Yakuza, like a dragon, you ain't dodging this guy and running around the room. This is turn-based combat. You gotta fight him the way the game wants you to fight him. So I was like, "Oh, I hope I can make it through this, all right." <laughs> well, um, w- one of one of the sc- uh, I-, I wish I had gotten a-, a screen capture of this, like you know, with the the share button or whatever on on the PS4. But um, like Ichiban's look is like, "What the fuck?" <laughs> like yeah, Kiryu, Kiryu had a very similar look on his face <laughs> when he walked in. You know what's great, by the way? I, is, I think um... it says, "What the ever loving fuck." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Kiryu didn't say that, but he was just like, oh, this isn't my scene, man. And he tried walking away like, what the fuck, you're saying you're better than me? And they, they pick a fight with you. But uh, in Yakuza 2, they were like, you get him, guys! And in Yakuza Kiwami 2, they were like, alright, boys, let's pacify this bitch. I'm like, yes! <laughs> um, <laughs> best localization. The best part is at the end, he offers you baby formula. Uh, like, And you can choose to him. accept or reject it. And, and and you should accept it because you do get a a, a a nice reward for it. But like, he's like squirming the whole time. He's like, "Why are you making me do this?" Yeah, uh, <laughs> like in, in, in Yakuza, and well, it's funny because you gain his respect in that. It, like, yeah, in Yakuza, in Yakuza two, you just beat his ass and walk out. And when you leave the building, the two goons that you beat up to like bring you there in the first place, they approach you and you're like oh, you guys want to get your asses kicked again? And they're like, oh, no, actually, we're here to thank you. Like, our boss is very aggressive with his, like, kinks, and he tries to get us into that. And, like, honestly, it's not our thing. Like, I'm more of a dom guy. He's more of a sub guy. Like, whatever, we have our own things. But, like, don't make it weird by bringing us into it against our will so they like they, they pay you some money. <laughs> <laughs> well, in this, uh, w- once you once you drink uh, once you drink the baby formula, you get a passion, uh, like uh, an upgrade in your passion stat. Which oh is, yeah, like, I mean there are, there are a bunch of ways to do that, yeah. but that's a nice convenient way of making it happen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like uh, I, because like you 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 get um access to different things once you once you have like those stats leveled up. So um, yeah, but... certain certain stats like there's a straight up secret area that opens up when you get enough of your I forgot what charisma, like mm-hmm. the one where you like are well dressed and look good or whatever. Like yeah, your costume yeah, doesn't yeah. change, but this one guy's like, you can't come in here until you're at least whatever equates it's to like level a bathroom four. or something. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, every every Yakuza game has a thing like that. Not necessarily in the bathroom, but you'll see what it is. It's pretty cool. It's optional. Like I never, I almost never made use of it, but it's nice. I, I love it yeah. when you have secret areas in Yakuza games. <laughs> And I, I also unlocked a couple of the mini games as well. Uh, I unlocked sure. the um, uh, the kart racing, which is a lot of fun. I, I really yeah, that, that that'll if you feel like doing the sub stories for that, that'll take you through the entire game. It's a lot of fun. I, I've been playing those, and uh, I also uh, started the batting cages as well. So uh, I'm enjoying. That yeah, there, there's not an arc or a sub story to that, but you can you can get some perks by doing those. Yeah, and uh, I also have like a couple other things that I could do on the side. Like I've been watching the movies, uh, which are yes, always there hilarious. are ten, I believe. Yeah. Oh, by the way, for the batting cages, I recommend that you rack up enough points to get the whatever the easy bat is called, which gives you only seventy percent of the points. But like, you have a way more generous timing window to hit the balls. Like you will overall get way more with it, unless you become oh, nice. a godlike batting cage player. Yeah, I was actually gonna save up for the uh, like the expert bat because I, I wanted to get. Well, more yeah, that'll points. that'll get you more points, but the timing yeah. window is narrower, and as you uh, increase in difficulty, some pitches are fucking bananas. Like even with a guide, like the timing oh. is a little tricky. See, I I just played like the the first the first wave, so it was yeah. That hard, wait but... wait wait till you like play. Well, you have to unlock advanced, but like do it, see what happens. <laughs> gotcha, gotcha. Um, well, I'm, I'm doing that, and 
what el- what else is going on? Um, oh yeah, I I unlocked the community college as well. So, so uh, that's did you ever fun. complete a test successfully? Because the yeah. animation oh, it's so that funny. is so funny. I was <laughs> like playing the, it. And they my throw wa- you in the air like the hip hip hooray. It's so great. <laughs> <laughs> I was play. I, I, my wife was like downstairs, uh, like while I, while I was playing it, she like walked in and like she's like, "Why are you? This yeah, is what just is this a, regu- game? <laughs> a regular test. Like you're you're literally answering real." questions about sports right now and yeah. i was just like yeah and and then i i got them all right and then like like that that hip hip hooray thing yeah you know? it's so like, funny what the fuck are you playing that's well that's yakuza like, uh, the entire series in a nutshell like when you're not doing the main plot like everything is just funny out of context shit. uh it's so I, funny. I, I know i remember by the way some of those questions get rough like i did the sega one and oh, I one can't of the wait. questions was about Valkyria Chronicles. Ooh. And it was like, what was the name of the, the place your characters are from in Valkyria Chronicles? And I'm like, I beat that game. I know this. It's Galia. Easy. And the four answers were like, the kingdom of Galia, the empire of Galia, <laughs> oh. the principality of Galia, the commonwealth of Galia. I'm like, oh, fuck. <laughs> I think it's an empire, isn't it? This is way hard. No, uh, I, I th- it was either principality or commonwealth. It was something I was absolutely oh, not wow. expecting. <laughs> Jesus Christ! Uh, I'm I'm it's actually like I, like I played this game kind of recently. I don't remember this at all. Yeah, Jesus. All right. Well, we, we once again went on a tangent here. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, that is the show for this week. Please remember to subscribe to the Corrective Consciousness YouTube and SoundCloud pages. Excuse me. While there, please give us thumbs up, ups, likes, and five star ratings on iTunes. Helps promote and spread awareness of the show, and any bit of encouragement helps keep the show going. You can also catch us on Thursday for our sister podcast, Corrective Consciousness, the podcast where we explore the inanity of pop culture. We'll be going over the um, Disaster Report series, because I think uh, Lotus has put some good time into that, and I, I want to learn a little bit more. Finally, you can friend me as Vise the Bold on pretty much everything. And you can follow me on my YouTube channel, Lotus Prince. You can hit me up on Twitter at, at Lotus Prince. And finally, if you are interested in seeing my videos early, selecting, or, oh, I'm getting out of order again. I was going to mention Raw Danger, but Raw Danger just finished even publicly. But in any case, if you're interested in seeing my videos early, getting in on exclusive live streams like Mortal Shell, selecting upcoming games for me to Let's Play, like the aforementioned Raw Danger, or getting conversations with me and other patrons on Discord, then perhaps consider swinging by my Patreon account, which can be found at patreon.com slash lotusprints. Alright, we will catch everybody on Thursday then. Until next time, everyone. Bye-bye.